Hey there photography friends, my name is Henry and on this YouTube channel I share the behind the scenes of my photography adventures. Look what landscape photography does to us. Some tips and tricks. Then we've got the line coming in. And of course, a little bit of banter. Get a look at that. Currently releasing one video per day over the advent period. So make sure that you subscribe to the channel and hit that little notification bell so that you don't miss any of these uploads. Now let's get into today's video. So good afternoon, ladies and gents, fellow photographers. In today's video, I wanna talk all about this lens, the Nikon 24-200 f4 to f6.3. This is, put simply, my favorite lens of all time. Now there's a whole host of reasons as to why the 24 to 200 is my favorite lens ever. And we shall get into all of those reasons in this evening's photo shoot. I'm out heading up a Wainwright called Home Fell. It's one of my favorite hills. If you don't know anything about it, you're gonna see why when we get up there, it's absolutely gorgeous. And in true Henry Turner fashion, sunsets in about an hour and a half and I'm a little bit late. So I must get a wobble on. Now the good thing about Home Fell, which is just up there on the top left of your screen, is that it's really small, but don't let that fool you. The views from up there are immense, as you're gonna see soon enough, but it means I've got a little bit more time to spare with me being late and all of that. Right, the 24 to 200, the first thing that I wanna say about this lens um, is probably the most obvious. It's the versatility in the focal range. 24 on a full frame camera, it's so wide and then 200 mil, you know, you're getting pretty zoomed in on that. And as well, the Nikon Z7's got like the DX crop sensor mode. So if I wanna like jump up to 300 millimeters, I can do that as well. Of course, that's just cropping into the photograph, but it suits me just fine. And why I'm mentioning that quite specifically is that for me, this kind of like skips out a lens. So the only other lens that I've got in my bag for this system is the Nikon 14 to 30 millimeter, and that's my wide angle lens. Whereas this is like my mid range zoom and my telephoto lens all in one. Now, if you're ever coming up to Home Fell, I'd really recommend you have a look at this little sort of prominent hill. You can see off in the distance there, the light's just hitting the top of it. I don't know the name of it actually, I'll pop it up on the screen, I'll, I'll find out afterwards. But yeah, I'm missing that today because I want to scoot straight up to Home Fell. But that is some viewpoint, let me tell you. Just such incredible views back to the Langdale Pikes down into the Langdale Valley. Lingmore Fell, just a really, really glorious vantage point. So yeah, do not miss that if you ever come up here. <laughs> So I'm just grabbing a really quick handheld photograph. Look at the light there. Everything is dark, except from this beautiful strip of golden light and it is hitting the landscape. Let me tell you, in the perfect place, all of those charismatic trees, beautiful crags. But what is making this scene in this photograph is the dark, black, ominous fells in the background, layers of them, beautiful. We've got Luffrig Fell, we've got Red Screes. You can even see a little bit of dove crag up there in the clouds and it is looking fantastic. So I'm zooming in into that section at about 180 millimeters. <sighs> Absolutely beautiful. Now, although the 24 to 200 is a little bit of a, a do-it-all lens is, is what I've called it in the past. You know, it's, it's, it's playing the role of two lenses, really, your mid-range zoom and your telephoto. 
you'd think there'd be a bit of a loss in sharpness, you know, something would have to let it down with his optics, but that's where you'd be wrong. The sharpness of the 24 to 200, hopefully it correlates well with the image that I just took there, uh, but the sharpness is absolutely fantastic. Um, obviously a lot of it's down to shooting with a full frame camera and having a good resolution, but I've definitely used worse lenses on full frame systems and yeah, something that mustn't be missed out I don't think just because it's a little bit of an all-purpose lens doesn't mean that it's not sharp it is pin sharp oh so we're nearly at the top now uh, you can maybe see the peak just over there where them slabs of rock are a little bit higher than everything else the light is so incredibly dramatic and look at it I love it when we get these just patches of light around the landscape man and then everywhere else is just looking so gloomy and moody the reason why I really wanted to come out this evening even though I have left left it late is because it's been one of those cloudy rainy days all day here in the lakes but then the forecast was for it to clear up around about sunset which as you can see there is pretty much exactly what it's doing and that is oh my gosh that is what is making for these incredible conditions look at that right off in the distance there's like this huge sort of rainbow across the hills there that is epic man oh wow ladies and gents the conditions are even better than i thought they were going to be this is amazing i'll tell you what that mad rainbow thing off in the background there I've never seen anything like that. I don't know if that's like a little bit of a, a, a weather phenomenon, you know. Somebody comment below if you know. But it's almost like, you know, light that's shining down on the, the distant hills, but it is actually a rainbow. It looks like it to my eye anyway. So I'm, I'm firing off a few shots here. Again, the tripod you can see there is just dumped on the floor. There's no point in using it because it's so windy. Um, and I'm, I'm wanting to freeze the motion of any of the trees that are blowing in the wind. So I'm needing a quick shot of speed anyway. So most of these images are being taken at 1 200th of a second, f6.3, and I'm bumping my ISO up to about ISO 400. Oh my gosh, this wind, I hope you can see, whoa, well over the gaff. I hope you can see in the background there. There's a rainbow here right next to us, but where's this pot of gold at now? Hand it over. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. It was there, I promise. It was beautiful. But look at this. Oh, there it is. There it is. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm all over the place, ladies and gents. This is what it does to us, landscape photography, in these incredible dramatic conditions. Like I said a second ago, I, I, I've not even taken the time to frigging look back here. Look, we've got Coniston Water peeking off in the distance. And then look at that light there. I'm going to have to try and make something of that in a minute. Oh, so look at this. Look at the state of this area. We've got the, the camera down on the deck nearly getting trodden on. The bag has been dumped many a moon ago. <laughs> oh, this is absolutely incredible. It is a moment to just stand in one spot and spin round like a carousel, just firing off all sorts of handheld images. Gosh, I've got lucky with these conditions. Oh, utter carnage, man. Do you know what? I always say that the only weather that I hate being out in is the wind. <laughs> well, I just had a bit of a thought. I might actually like the wind even because it gets me all like frantic. Look, it's just dropped now and I've instantly gone like a little bit calmer, even with all this amazing dramatic light. <laughs> just so, something about when it's absolutely blowing a gale like that. I just, don't know. It just get, gets me into headless chicken mode really easy. So I'm going to head up to Homefell Summit proper, just keep an eye out on the way. Um, even things like this, look, these big puddles and stuff, I love them. Look how it's like reflecting all of that amazing light. In fact, I'm going to stop here and grab a quick shot. I love these sorts of um, like foreground areas. It's literally just a puddle, but it's all about that reflected light. So I'm just doing a quick handheld bracket. I just can't be bothered with the tripod, man. It's just going to hinder me. I can see it. 
but shooting really wide, I think I'm actually at 24 millimeters, somewhere between 24 and 30. Just trying to capture as much of this puddle as I can really, so it will be 24 mil. And then sun off in the background. And honestly, the light is just so dramatic shooting directly into the sun. I'm doing like a five shot bracket. I don't even know if it's gonna work because all the reeds are blowing about the gaff, but yeah, we'll see. I think it's gonna be a nice dramatic photograph. And like I said, I just love using these puddles as foreground. All oh, that light's coming back out now. Look how it just lights up all of these reeds, man. It is beautiful. The jets, man, the jets. I don't like the jets. <laughs> Everybody's mad for them, but God, they just scare the life out of me, you know? Oh, this is such a good evening, man. Look what landscape photography does to us. Oh, it is so incredible. <sighs> Do you know what one of my favorite things is, right? My, one of my favorite things is, I get some very specific comments from you lot. I appreciate every single comment, but there's some that, like they actually cut me up a bit. Like they really affect me. And it's people that cannot get up the fells. Whether they're ill, they're disabled, um, they're, they're, they're too old. I need to be careful when I say that, but um, that's just what some people say. And they say, when I watch your videos, Henry, it takes me back to when I could go up the fells. And oh my gosh, that always hits me so hard. And it makes me feel so proud that I can at least take people up to these locations in video form. You could join me, you can share in some of the joys of incredible light and locations and photography and oh, oh it's just so special, man. This is such a special hobby, isn't it? Okay, the old sun there. Oh, this is what I have to battle with. Like the pragmatic side to it, I'm a professional landscape photographer. Essentially, I need to take good photographs for a living. But then there's the emotional side of me that just wants to freaking cry every time I'm up a hill and the light's amazing. Um, yeah, I need to try and make some out of this now because that soon is soon, that sun is soon gonna dip behind the Coniston Fells. Ooh. So the rain's coming in now <laughs> from behind us. Oh my gosh, it's all going off. Now, I got an image um, years ago, maybe three years ago or something. This one here from pretty much this exact location. You can see I was just using some of these uh, little tiny little puddles where the water's collected in some of these areas of the, of the rocks up here on Home Fell. I think this is the proper peak, by the way. So we're here. We've made it up finally <laughs> after all of the carnage. But yeah, I don't, I really like that photograph. It's dramatic. It's got, you know, there's amazing light. We've got the view of Coniston Water in the background. I don't know if that one will ever be beat from this spot, but I might turn my attention in this direction. In fact, if I move myself out of the way, I reckon as you're seeing it there, something like that is going to be a photograph. I think it's worth a shot. Oh, I hope you can hear me all right. That wind is fierce, man. It is not letting up. So I'm just going to have to go handheld again, man, because of this wind, there's no point in getting the tripod out. Even though it's a good sturdy tripod, I'm still gonna need to like shoot at a quick shutter speed because of this wind. Plus the rain's coming directly into us. It's one of them where I've got to quickly wipe my lens and then grab the shot like that. But I was thinking I might need my wide angle lens for this image, but looking back along here, it feels like it's suited perfectly to shoot in a portrait orientation actually. So 24 millimeters is more than wide enough and it's just lovely to have these sorts of like really rounded crags, like weathered rounded crags that we've got up here as well. We've got one or two of these little sort of puddles as well. It does just add a little bit of interest to the foreground. And what I love is all the like cracks in the rock as well. There's so much detail and interest intimately, you know, in the foreground. And then it's great because there's a lot of depth to the photograph as, as we're looking back into the Langdale Valley, back towards Lingmore Fell again loads of different layers of fells and it matches really nicely with the rock here in the foreground and then just finished off by that sky the only thing i'm hoping for is perhaps if we get one more splash of light from that direction that just lights up this foreground ever so slightly now just before i show you the image i'll tell you my settings 
F14, 1 320th of a second, ISO 4000. Don't be, a, don't be afraid to put your ISO up. I'd rather have a high ISO here to get me a quick shutter speed than a low ISO and then a long shutter speed and have a frigging blurry photograph. So this one's probably going to be a half decent photograph, let's say. Oh, so the sun went down so quickly <laughs> after I got that photograph and oh, the temperature has dropped so much as well, man. It is freezing. So thank you so much for tuning in. I, uh, I appreciate you all very, very much. Please do hit the subscribe button and join me along on this Advent series where I'm releasing one video every day throughout Advent, right the way up to Christmas Eve. So it'd be great to have you along on this little this little journey where I'll talk about all things landscape photography and share a few tips and tricks along the way as well. But yeah, um, please comment down below. Let me know what your favorite ever lens is. I'd love to hear that. Thanks for your support. I shall see you on the next adventure. Out. <laughs>